Now, I would have gotten this out sooner if I didn't have to retype this twice. So, sorry for the delay. But y'all better hit that like button. God of War Ragnarok is a continuation of 2018's God of War. Some years have gone past since then and Ragnarok is on the verge of happening. In this story you see Freya pulling up for smoke, Odin and Thor pulling up for smoke, and Atreus is older now. In this game Atreus is learning more of who he is as a god, also trying to prevent Ragnarok from happening. Kratos around this time is dealing with his son that's going through puberty while trying to stay out of the way of Ragnarok and teaching his son more lessons while trying to be a good father. Through the story, you see Kratos and Atreus have their father-son moments when they're arguing or when they're trying to trust each other. In this story, you get to see Kratos be more of his just moody self. You get to see him be more open and more in tune with his emotions as you go through the story. You get to see him be more open to the characters around him and talk about his backstory what he has done and where he has been I don't get it fucked up just because there are some sentimental moments and there are some father son moments in this game don't mean Kratos ain't ready to turn up for the smoke he still will rip the spine out your ass if it needs to be what I really like about the story is the conversations that take place as you're out exploring the realms as they talk more about the nine realms the gods and Kratos backstory along with some easter eggs the first hour of this will have you glued to the screen. Seeing Odin and Thor pull up on Kratos was just like this. Hey, I don't know who you think you is, but I don't like you being in my neck of the woods without checking in with me, bro. Man, who the fuck is you, bro? You ain't my P.O. I don't need to check in the shit. I'm Big Daddy Kratos around here. I ripped that three on the Spartan game wherever I go, nigga. That's on Athens, that's on Sparta, and that's on Zeus, nigga. Oh, okay, so we got a badass here. <laughs> okay, this nigga think that 300 shit means something around here. I bet. Show him how we doing on the west side. Say none but word. The boss fight between Kratos and Thor has to be one of the best boss fights of the year. This is just tip of the iceberg for the story. But let's talk about the gameplay. The gameplay from Ragnarok is almost the same as the last one, but with some improvements. The Leviathan Axe now can be permafrost. That means before or while you're in combat, you can freeze the axe and attack or throw it for some extra ice damage. Same can be done with the blades for extra fire damage. Kratos also gets a new spear with his choice of weapons. The spear can be thrown at enemies and stuck inside of them until you detonate them. Each one of these weapons have a way of helping you out of puzzles or getting through a map what I really liked about this game is that there is a lot of upgrades from gear, weapons, and combat moves. All of it is upgradable. Weapons can be upgraded along with the skills that come with them. The skills with those weapons can unlock mods that can give you a little bit of edge in fights. For example, you can add more damage to that one move you really like using. Or swap it out for stun or elemental damage. Along with Kratos Arsenal is a different variety of shields. Every shield has a specific way of being used for absorbing damage and taking the damage and throwing it back at enemies. For instance, there is a shield that absorbs damage when you parry at the right time. There is a shield that absorbs more damage than all the other ones. One that charges up then blasts the damage back at enemies and one that you can charge with at people. You can also put attachments on your shield that can boost your stats and also give edge in fights. The Spartan Rage has some new additions to it too. You can choose between three variations, Fury, Valor, and Wrath. Fury is basically you going savage mode and getting a boost in attack damage. You also gain health back when you attack enemies. Valor heals Kratos back with regenerated health and Wrath is Kratos charged attack that does big damage in one hit. Exploring the different realms and seeing how they were looked great. I played on performance mode and quality mode, but preferred the performance mode because the quality mode seemed a little choppy to me. Some parts of the game I would have just looked and seen how well the environments were just done well. 
there will be times where you have to go backtrack to between rounds to find new ways through the map or go back and get something missed. One of the things I did like doing as side missions were fighting the side bosses. It seemed like they had more around this time. Instead of Valkyries, we had Berserkers this time. When in fights, you have Atreus giving you support. He also has a skill tree you have to upgrade to make him more helpful in battles. In Ragnarok this time, you get to play as Atreus. When playing as Atreus, you see Atreus has a lot more to work with. He's a good archer, he can throw hands, and sometimes he can be a wolf or bear. Along with his new skills, he has two new bows that shoot differently. I thought it was good that they gave Atreus some playtime in this game. I had some fun playing as him and also getting to see his perspective on things in the story. I don't really have much feedback for the developers. I've seen people complain about the new camera angle that they're using. I think having a camera option or a field of view option will be good for those people who say that. Some things I would like to see though in the future is seeing Artreus getting a standalone DLC with him learning more about his godhood. I wouldn't mind if the developers explored into different mythologies like Egyptian gods, Japanese gods, or even Chinese gods. That way we can see Kratos vs Goku. Huh? Huh? Y'all would like that, huh? Anyways, Santa Monica Studios has came out and said they're working on multiple new projects, which I'm not upset about. God of War is already on the PlayStation Mount Rushmore and its place in gaming is solidified. It didn't win game of the year this year, but that doesn't mean it was a bad game. It just means Elder Ring was a better game. Now, I know I don't need to say this, but if you're one of those people that don't have this game, is it worth getting? I leave it up to you. Now, if you're an Xbox fanboy, is it worth getting? Because I seen y'all playing that crackhead version of God of War, man, and that shit's sad, bro. But hey, I'll leave it up to y'all guys to decide that. If you happen to stay to the end of this video, I appreciate it. Tell me in the comments how you feel about God of War Ragnarok or what you like from it or what you would like to see in the future from this series. I will also appreciate it if you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, or even checking out my other content. Follow me on other social media platforms to keep up with me and I will get back to y'all in the next video. So, as always, move fossil and cage then. I'm out.